and we are in an expected loss of signal or LOS period. Uh, essentially, we're not able to receive any communication from the crew at this point in time, but as I said before, expected. The crew knows that. The teams on the ground right. here know that. All right, and that was one of the critical roles uh, earlier of getting acquisition. Dragon SpaceX com check. The lab is clear, Sarah. Cruise to its side. Copy that. Great to hear from you. All right, there we heard the voice of Commander MLA, Michael Lopez Alegria. Uh, they're just confirming that the, the crew, yep. they're doing good. Right on schedule, too. Yeah. As we mentioned before, the external temperature of the capsule is about 3,500 degrees as it, uh, you know, makes its way through the Earth's atmosphere. But the crew, they're comfortable inside. Uh, Dragon, well, you can expect automated parachute deploy on at standard altitude. Copy that, sir. All right, so just a heads up there to the crew that they can expect to feel those initial drogue parachutes deploy. Right. Um, as I was saying before, the crew is comfortable. You know, they the, while the exterior of the capsule is warming up, we are purging the, um, the internal cabin and their suits with nitrox or nitrogen-oxygen mi mixture to keep them comfortable and cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, as we're waiting for confirmation that Dragon Shoots have deployed, uh, you know, just prior to the deployment of the initial drogue chutes, Dragon will automatically safe the propulsion system. Uh, Dragon then deploys its drogue parachutes to stabilize and decelerate the vehicle, like you mentioned earlier, Kate. Now, just before the, the, the deployment of those drogue parachutes, seats automatically rotate 26 degrees to keep the crew within acceptable um, or G limits for entry and landing. Uh, without the drogue chutes, we would have to make the mains three times stronger and heavier. Um, and of course, everything about spaceflight is about weight. Right. So if Dragon you... SpaceX, brace for drogue window. Bracing. All right, so just a couple moments here until those drogue parachutes are released. Shortly after the drogues are released, we'll see the release of the main parachutes, right. which help to further decelerate the vehicle and allow the vehicle to proceed safely to the splashdown zone uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the vehicle's velocity at drogue deployment is about 350 miles per hour, and they deploy at about 18,000 feet. from that deploy, it's a pretty quick succession of events, right? We deploy the drugs very quickly after. There we go. We're seeing the drugs deploy now. Live view from onboard Dragon Endeavor of those drogue parachutes. Capsule's going about 350 miles per hour. Nominal ascent rate for two healthy drogues. It's what you love to hear from inside yeah, the capsule. Exactly. Because unfortunately, they can't see right. uh, the parachutes. So to hear that call out that their drogues are healthy, it's great news. So there's a better shot of Beautiful those drogue shot. parachutes from our tracking camera. You know, and having that single voice at the core, talking to crew, coming, at, letting crew know that they're going into a planned LOS, mm -hmm. and then coming back. All right, there's the four mains deploying. All right, so we visual. have visual on four mains. So there we heard that confirmation of four mains deploying. And the center is nominal. All gorgeous shot of those four main parachutes. 1,000 meters. Copy, 1,000 meters. So just the crew reporting that they're only 1,000 meters right. uh, from splashdown. Right. Landing in water is simpler, therefore more reliable, um, and it provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. Um, you know, we had to learn how to make Dragon waterproof, <laughs> but once you do, that's it. It's a rinse, 
review, reuse type process. Copy 800. Once again, our Axiom 1 crew is targeting a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean uh, at our Jacksonville recovery zone. The recovery teams uh, are in the area waiting for that splashdown confirmation. Scheduled for about two minutes from now, according to our clocks. 600 meters. Copy 600. So we can see that capsule there, as I mentioned before, you know, when we saw it on station and of course during launch, it, you know, it was pure white. Right. <laughs> it is no longer. Right. Uh, we now have really a beautiful shot of that toasted marshmallow. Um, you know, that, that thermal protection, those thermal protection systems, right. um, you know, keep the crew safe. Copy 400. And like you said, you know, that's that's a testament to the design of the vehicle doing exactly what it was designed to do and what it has Absolutely. to do to do it safely. And like you said, rinse, reuse, right? It's all part of reusable space flight. First live view of our crew there from inside the Dragon capsule now that they have re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. 200 meters bracing for impact. Copy bracing. I think I see that zero-G indicator in the lap of mission specialist Mark Pathy there. That's right. <laughs> the crew is looking comfortable in their view that we saw there, ready to splash down just a few moments from now. And right now, I think those parachutes slowed the vehicle down to about, is that about 50, 50 miles, miles per hour? hour. Yep. As you can tell by the cheers behind us, we can confirm that the Dragon capsule with the AX-1 crew has, has splashed down. Dragon Endeavor has returned home with the Axiom-1 crew. Dragon SpaceX, we see splashdown and mains cut. We can turn. SpaceX recovery ship and team that you see there on your screen has been waiting for Dragon Splashdown, and they're now making their way to that location. On behalf of the entire SpaceX team, welcome back to planet Earth. <laughs> the Axiom-1 mission marks the beginning of a new paradigm for human spaceflight. We hope you we hope you enjoyed the extra few days in space, and thanks for choosing to fly with SpaceX. Sarah, to you, Ken, the team, and MCC, and all the teams that have supported us, all the engineers, technicians, and job. We're very grateful for mission. Thank you. All right, well, good calls there from MLA and CORE. And we copy all. Crew excited to be home. All of us on ground happy to have crew back home. Now, the teams have been ready and waiting for about three, three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes to make their way uh, to get the crew inside Dragon. Right, and, you know, I, I don't know if it's the same for egress, but during launch we noticed that there was a very particular way in which crew and ground teams had to ingress the vehicle uh, because of those volumetric constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, but allowing those footrests to come out does free up space a little easier. You know, it's been, um, they've spent a number of days in orbit, um, haven't felt the effects of gravity in a while. Um, so making it as easy as possible to egress the vehicle is really important, yeah. um, not only for their comfort, but also for everybody's safety. It looks like pilot Larry Connor might All right, those are his first steps back on planet Earth after spending 17 days on orbit. If it were me, I imagine I'd, I'd probably feel a little shaky, right? Because yeah. they're, they're, they don't have gravity up there. I've, you know, they did take mm -hmm. exercise equipment exactly. to, to keep their muscles working while they're up there, but still, hey, it's... Sarah, we're going off calm. Thanks for everything. We'll see you on deck. Sounds good. Talk to you later. 
efficient yeah. can be. Yeah. Uh, but you know, even after the 17 days that they were in microgravity, you know, that's a that's still a pretty significant change on the body. Yeah, it certainly is. So it's pretty amazing to see them, you know, just take those steps yeah. and and begin that reacclimation process. Exactly. Now, once they are. Uh, so for the three crew members that we saw exit or egress the vehicle already, um, you know, they, they walk off. בסמל לאפשרויות של שיתוף פעולה לכל האנושות. בשנים שקדמו למשלחת הזאת, אנחנו באקסיום ספייס פעלנו ליצירת מהלכים, הסכמים והקמת צוותים הדרושים ליישום פעילות פרטית בחלל. פעילויות שלאורך ההיסטוריה נעשו על ידי ממשלות וסוכנויות חלל. מההתחלה ועם כל צד אקסיום ספייס יצרה תפיסות חדשות ופעילויות ללא תקדים. הצבנו לעצמנו מטרות מאתגרות וביקשנו הרבה מהצוות האסטרונאוטים הראשון שלנו והנה אנחנו נמצאים בסיום מוצלח ואפשר בקלות לומר שהצוות עלה על כל הציפיות. אנחנו מלאי גאווה עצומה נוכח ההישגים שאליהם הגיעו מפקד מיכאל לופז אלגריה, לרי קונור, איתן סטיבה, מרק פאטי ואיתם כל מאות אנשי הצוותים התומכים שתרמו להצלחת משימת ה-X1. במשך פיתוח המשימה וביצועה הצלחנו לעורר השראה בין רבים שגם הם רוצים למצוא את מקומם בין הכוכבים. לדוגמה, אקסיום ספייס קיבלה מעל 400 פניות עבור כיתה של 23 סטזיורים. חמש מדינות החליטו לשלוח אסטרונאוטים מטעמם דרך אקסיום לחלל. ובכל יום אנחנו מקבלים פניות מאנשי מדע ויזמים שרוצים לנצל את תנאי החלל. וכאן המקום להודות בהתלהבות לצוותים של נאס"א, ספייסקס, לכל אנשי התמיכה של צוות AX1 הנמצאים באוהיו, קנדה, ספרד וישראל, לחוקרים בארצות רבות שסמכו עלינו ועל יכולתנו ליישם את הפרויקטים שלכם בחלל, ולמשפחת אקסיום הנרחבת, כולל במיוחד את צוות קרן רמון ומסיבת רקיע שעבדו במסירות ימים ולילות בחודשים האחרונים. מטעם אקסיום ספייס, לצוות של AX1, מרק, איתן, לרי ואלה, כל הכבוד והגאווה, וברוכים השבים הביתה לכדור הארץ. שרן, back to you. אמיר, תודה רבה, ומאוד טוב. אקסיום 1 הוא...